Moon Knight Epic Collection Volume 7 Death Watch. So they skipped around. They, you know, the Epic Collections used to skip around quite a bit. And then with the newer ones, uh, with the shorter lengths of volumes, they've actually been going in order. And it's been kind of nice with Moon Knight because you've got one, two, three, four. Uh, and then unfortunately, they skipped five and six and went to seven with this one with Death Watch. And a lot changes for Moon Knight between volume four and here, uh, which is 1992 and 1994. Covers Moon Knight uh, number 39 through 51, a graphic novel in here, a special, and then a couple crossovers with Web of Spider-Man and then a Marvel Comics Presents storyline. Um, and so there's this like shadow cans council now uh, that's uh, trailing Moon Knight. Now, the graphic novel Divided We Fall takes place actually around the time of Mark Spector and Moon Knight number one. Um, and this is the best part of this uh, series. This is a good uh, Moon Knight storyline that is Mark Spector doing his deal. You got Marlene, you've got uh, you've got uh, Frenchie doing his thing, and uh, they're actually uh, getting brainwashed by a bad guy uh, in order to kill Gorbachev. Uh, and so Moon Knight has to stop them, uh, in and in the process, like also kind of make sure they're they're cleared. So uh, this was a really good storyline. I really loved this graphic novel. I was like, oh, cool. This is a this is a fantastic thing. And I was expecting that we're going to get back into regular Moon Knight territory, but we're not. Um, and so here it is. This is by Terry Cavanaugh as a writer. And he loves to spam words all over the page. So it is a rough read on that level to begin with. But there's this like holographic council that Moon Knight like relies on for intel and things like that. And they're in different positions of authority uh, across the city and, and whatnot. Um, and in this one, he's actually going to Dr. Doom's, uh, like, uh, Latverian embassy. And, uh, and Doom is actually testing him, it turns out, to try to hire him. Now, inside this, like, Moon Knight, like, is, like, dying inside. Because I guess there was a thing with the Hobgoblin, which would have been in Volume 6 or whatnot. Um, and that Hobgoblin situation left him, like, rotting from the inside. Uh, it gets caught up in an even worse thing here pretty shortly. Now, uh, uh, hold on. There's a uh, Mark Spector Moon Knight special, which uh, which crosses over with Shang Chi, and they go on an adventure to like a uh, you know an an island type of thing and uh, fight a bad guy in order to win. And that that one's pretty cool. Um, it, it's a little zany, uh, very classic comics and like the weird like sort of uh, sort of deal. And you get a uh, Moon Blight uh, parody comic in the back of that. All right. Now we're back into our main story again. <laughs> and the art gets really wonky here. It's like, it's like uh, you get this, these artists who are like, do this like type of like sketchy type of things um, with, with like really dark colors and saturated colors. And it's really rough. This is a crossover for Infinity War for the next several issues. And Moon Knight like gets a, uh, you know, alternate reality version of himself who's like evil trying to take over. And he has to fight against him through this as he's getting decayed as well. And so it interrupts things, and it feels really weird. Meanwhile, in the background, uh, Frenchie's getting courted by these, like, um, Templars, who is supposedly a part of, uh, and he has to deal with that at the same time. Um, so you see kind of the art is, like, it, it gets a little wonky through here and uh, and kind of kind of fuzzy in the way that things go. We get a break uh, for Web of Spider-Man. These Web of Spider-Man stories, uh, the Hobgoblin is kind of coming back, and Moon Knight and, and Spider-Man are working on tracking him down. Um, these ones are a little easier to read and a little easier to follow uh, for just two issues. <laughs> and then it gets back into this storyline where Moon Knight is uh, himself again uh, and, and trying to hunt down the Hobgoblin and Demo Goblin, uh, who shows up. Demo Goblin's from an alternate dimension. And uh, Moon Knight's dying, and he ends up in a prison... And he's hunts down this character who you see where the, the art gets really kind of wonky and hard to follow in different spots as they try to get creative with the uh, panel layouts. Um, so he's fighting that. He's he's fighting his own internal thing where he's about to die. And uh, he's also got this guy who's like uh, breaking out of prison. He got some powers or whatnot from an electric shock. And it, he becomes like a vigilante to try to kill a bunch of people. Um, and so he's trying to hunt down that guy too. Over the course of this, he also revokes his Avengers membership. That's kind of interesting part of this too. You see this art style stays throughout the entire thing and it all kind of wraps up. Moon Knight eventually thinks he's going to die. He's going to pick a replacement in one of the issues. Uh, he doesn't end up dying. Uh, and this is, uh, this is where he kind of quits the Avengers and we get one more issue kind of wrapping, uh, things up and getting back to standard panel layouts for an issue before, 
Uh, we get into the, the uh, Marvel Comics Presents, which is a totally different storyline. has nothing to do with any of this. doesn't reference any of this. It's like it was a uh, filler story somewhere. And uh, this one's about like a jury that's getting harassed uh, and getting uh, blackmailed. Uh, and so it's, again, you get a nice read at the end that's very um, straightforward, just like the one at the beginning. So those two graphic novels are, I'd say, well, I guess the graphic novel and the um, Marvel Comics Presents works pretty well. The Moon Knight special works pretty well. Everything else in between was kind of a cluster and difficult to read. So uh, a bummer for Moon Knight, uh, the Shadow Council thing. I'm, I don't know where it came from or what's going on with it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it's just, uh, yikes. So I call this a 5.5 out of 10 overall. Um, and, uh, this is my least favorite Moon Knight volume I've read out of the Epic Collection so far. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon. Mm -hmm.